So today I want to answer the question, can intermittent fasting change your nutrient requirements? It's not a simple answer of yes or no. Uh, there's more to it. So let's take each concept. The first thing you need to realize is that when you do intermittent fasting or fasting, prolonged fasting, you're living off your reserves unless you're taking nutrients during that period. And by the way, I do recommend taking nutrients during the fast because we don't know if you're deficient. And there's a lot of variables involved. Number one, what is your current diet when you eat? Or you're doing what one lady said on my show recently, internet keto, which is like a random selection of pretty much anything as long as it's low carb. Um, there's so many things that can affect this question. Number one, the food that you're eating. Um, what kind of soils is it grown on? A lot of foods in America are basically, they look good on the outside, they're really big, but they're empty with nutrients, like tomatoes, for example. They just taste like nothing. And you also have foods that are very deficient in trace minerals, like zinc, for example, or iodine, because they're not grown on soils that they replenish some of these minerals. Um, and then when you're on the keto plan or some other plan, um, how nutrient dense are those foods? Okay, that's one question. What about your history? How long have you eaten junk foods? Junk foods deplete you of nutrients. Refined foods pull out the B vitamins and minerals, potassium especially. What about your gastrointestinal tract? Do you have enough stomach acid? If you're on antiacids, chances are you don't have enough stomach acid and you're not gonna be able to break down the proteins. You're not gonna absorb the minerals effectively. That would be one factor. Uh, what about the gallbladder? Let's say, for example, you don't have a gallbladder or you don't have enough bile. You're not gonna be able to absorb vitamin A, D, E, or K as well as you should. Are you on medication? What if you're on metformin that pulls out B1? Or let's say you're on diuretics. It depletes potassium. There's so many other factors here. Stress depletes B vitamins and calcium. Grains, you have the phytates in the fiber in the brand of grains, which block zinc, for example, and other minerals. Um, let's say, for example, you have malabsorption because you have scar tissue or you don't have the villi to absorb certain nutrients in your, in your intestine because uh, you have IBS or celiac or something like that. Or you have an alteration in your genes that don't allow you to absorb certain nutrients. It's called polymorphism. Uh, and then let's say, for example, you're on keto and you're consuming uh, less carbohydrates. So you're going to dump a lot of fluid and water. And with that, you lose some electrolytes sometimes and also salt. When you're on keto, you need actually more sodium. You actually need more B2. You need a bit more potassium because your diet has shifted. So different things can require different nutrients. The other factors that you need to look at is the difference between water-soluble vitamins and fat-soluble vitamins. The water-soluble vitamins are not stored very long, maybe several days, with the exception of B12. Okay, B12 can be stored for up to a year or more. Okay, And also vitamin C can be stored in the adrenal gland. But let's say, for example, you have adrenal fatigue and you're depleted of vitamin C. Um, I don't know if you realize this, but if you have no vitamin C for four months, you can start developing symptoms of scurvy, which is kind of an advanced deficiency of vitamin C. You have a lot of um, it's called classical deficiencies, like uh, beriberi, which is a B1 deficiency, rickets, which is a vitamin D deficiency, pellagra, which is a vitamin B3 deficiency. And all of these are very severe vitamin deficiencies. But let's say, for example, you don't have those severe deficiencies, you have a subclinical deficiency. Well, the body will then ration out certain nutrients for the most important things, but not necessarily satisfy the demands for everything in your body. So, for example, if your body is low in B1, it may use it only for cl blood clotting, but not necessarily for DNA repair, uh, cancer prevention. Um, so it rations out the nutrients for the most important things based on what it needs to survive right now. And so these subclinical deficiencies can create long-term health problems. The RDAs were meant to prevent these major diseases, but not necessarily to optimize all the functions for long-term health. 
So if you have a subclinical deficiency, you may end up with a hair loss or have fatigue or have anxiety or sleeping problems because your body is using those things for things that are more important for survival right now. So when you're doing fasting or intermittent fasting, you may not show uh, any of the deficiencies for the fat soluble vitamin, mainly the water soluble vitamins. And this is another reason why, you know, when you're doing keto, uh, B vitamins are important. Now, when it comes to minerals and trace minerals, they don't stay in the body for very long, okay? Except certain minerals will. Like it's very difficult for your body to get rid of excess iron, for example, or calcium. But the minerals that you use a lot of, um, like potassium, magnesium, but even sodium, but not as much, those minerals are used more and your body can get rid of them a lot easier than iron and calcium. When you're doing intermittent fasting, I recommend taking the B vitamins as well as these minerals and trace minerals, just to make sure. Now, another factor is your microbes. Uh, your microbes can make certain vitamins, like vitamin K1, as long as you have the microbes in there. So if you have a history of taking a lot of antibiotics and you have an imbalance of microbes, or you have SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, that can alter your uh, vitamin production from your microbes. And if you have like inflammation in your gut, that can also alter your ability to make vitamins. And if you have damage in the lining of your gut, in the small intestine or large, that can also prevent the absorption of those nutrients. Your body also makes certain B vitamins, like biotin, for example. So anyway, I just wanted to create this one video to show um, that it's not a simple answer. There's a lot of things that you have to look at. You have to use judgment. Um, you have to look at your history. Do I have a reserve of nutrients left in my tissues to pull out of? And is my current diet nutrient dense? Is it healthy keto or not? To play it safe, I recommend taking B vitamins, trace minerals, and electrolytes during the fast. All right, thanks for watching. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now, and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.